Welcome back to another episode of Figma Fridays. My name is RJ Nye. I'm a designer at Rockstar Studios. And today I wanted to share five Figma plugins to help speed up your workflow. And let's just jump right into it. Um, the five plugins I wanna to share today in Figma are Color Compass, uh, Mapsicle, Find and Replace, Unsplash, and Lorem Ipsum. And, you know, obviously these aren't, these don't represent necessarily like all of the key uh, plugins you'd be, you know, using across a project. Uh, but these are some of the more crucial plugins I found that, you know, they really help kind of speed up all parts of a design workflow when I'm creating new components, creating new mockups, and so on. Um, and so this first one I want to go over is called Color Compass. And this one is really useful for establishing just the basic colors of a project. If you don't have a design system set up, one of the first things you want to be doing is setting up all these different colors for your project. And so using uh, Color Compass, you can take one of your core colors, maybe it's a core uh, brand color. And um, once you type that in, you can spit out all these different, you know, complementary colors, analogous colors, and kind of get a jump start on establishing everything that you need. And uh, so this is a pre-existing one that I have here. And so I'm just going to duplicate this so we have something to work with. Uh, and so in this case, I'm going to replace this with another uh, core color. In this case, it's a type of red, like this one here. I'm gonna open the Color Compass plugin, and you can see all these different options here just ready to go based on that color I have selected here. Um, I don't really need eight steps for this. Um, I don't think it's it's that necessary to have that many colors defined for a design system. Uh, so I'm gonna change this to five. And uh, from here, you can see the tints, the shades, and then all the different uh, complementary types of colors. And so from here, I select this, and I just want to simply match it to the uh, to the option of of tint in that side side panel. Pretty straightforward. And then same thing for complementary. And complementary is going to be a mix of just the regular complementary colors and the split complementary. I just like to keep them all in the same line, just for simplicity's sake. And of course, these aren't necessarily colors that I might be using completely throughout a project, but at least uh, helps me get a head start. Um, it lets me not have to worry about, um, you know, all the different color choices I need to be making up front. Next is uh, triadic, then analogous, and then uh, tetradic, which is actually a combination of the core red and I believe this color here. So I don't need to choose those two, just that one than this one. And then white and black, I just keep it simple. I always like to keep it here just as a quick visual reference. Um, and so yeah, and so with that, I've essentially established a really quick uh, core color system for my new project. And then from there, you can, uh, you know, start um, iterating on it, you can start saving stuff, naming it, whatever you want to. And um, the uh, next plugin I wanted to go over was one called Mapsicle. Uh, Mapsicle is very useful for whenever you need to include um, in your mockups, um, like a screenshot of like a Google map type overlay or something um, that's super common in a lot of product designs these days is to have some kind of uh, overlay map view. And Mapsicle kind of helps uh, shortcut the amount of time it would take for you to, you know, look up the correct address, being able to get a screenshot of it and put it to a file. And especially if you need to update it down the road, that's you know super tedious to do. Mapsicle helps uh, shortcut essentially uh, the amount of time it would take you to do that. And so I've uh, created just a simple mock-up here of just some simple cards for different locations here in Austin, Texas. And obviously there are different map views here that need to be established. And so for this one, the Texas State Capitol, uh, this one is correct, so I don't need to worry about that. That's actually my core component that everything is based on. Um, this one is the Bullock Texas State History Museum. And uh, since in my component, I had established uh, these um, these maps with the Mapsicle plugin, it means I can simply just, uh, it's Figma is smart enough to know that this was established with Mapsicle. So whenever I click on it in the component, it'll have that option down there in the bottom right corner for me to just make any modifications. So in this case, I'll go here. And with Mapsicle, you can actually, <laughs> you know, go anywhere you want to. Um, but in this case, I have the address. So I'm simply gonna type that in for accuracy's sake. All right, that's the uh, Bullock Texas State History Museum that I want. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And based on the, um, 
wait, hold on. I think I might have the wrong thing selected. There we go. And let's type that in again. All right, there we go. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, based on whatever object that you have selected, like a rectangle or circle, whatever shape, uh, whatever component, Map School is smart enough to know uh, that whatever map image you apply is applied to those dimensions. So in this case, this part of the component is 320 pixels wide by 238 tall. And so from here, um, I have picked the style that I want. I simply update it. And in real time, it updates it in that component. And so let me finish it out over here. for the Blanton Museum of Art update. And then lastly, uh, Zilker Park. Obviously it's out of frame, but uh, for mockups, it's always helpful to be as accurate as possible to a true life uh, design. Or I should uh, probably type in the actual address since I do have it. Uh, let's see, probably here is good. And that's it, Mapsicle is super useful, it's super handy. Um, you'll be using it on all kinds of projects. Uh, so it, it's something that I really recommend that um, uh, every designer has installed. Um, the next plugin I wanted to go over was uh, Find and Replace and it's uh, just for text. And so it does exactly what it, the name says it does. Um, so in this case, let's say, uh, for whatever reason, the Texas Capitol got an updated name. Now, let's say there was some decision made where it's no longer referred to Texas Capitol, but Texas State Capitol. In that case, uh, let's say I had you know, 40 pages of variants and different um, iterations of, of this mockup, and it would take forever to just update everything. Um, instead, I can just go up to plugins, go to find and replace, find Texas Capitol, and in real time, you'll see how many uh, results pop up that match those uh, that name there. And I want to replace this with Texas State Capital. And in real time, it updated here, it updated here, and even updated in the original component that everything is based on. And so with that, you know, with essentially just the, the click of a mouse, you get to update everything in real time. Um, and it makes uh, creating variants for these projects so much uh, easier and, and quicker to do, especially. Uh, the next plugin I want to go over is the Unsplash plugin. And the Unsplash plugin is it's pretty useful if you just need to find random photos for something, especially for like a background element. Um, but I also find it especially useful for uh, quickly finding avatars for, for users. Um, it can be a, a pretty serious and tedious hassle to try to find uh, uh, avatars for a mock-up, especially if you have to have a whole suite of them. Maybe you have to have about uh, 10 to 15 different ones to, in order to uh, effectively create like a, like a storyline for your project. And so in this case, I have an avatar component that I've predefined. And so um, what's great about the Unsplash plugin is that if you have multiple components or objects selected, it's smart enough to know to apply different images for all those components all at once. So I don't have to click on one component, run the Unsplash plugin, and then do it over and over. I can simply just click on all these avatars, go up to plugins, go to the Unsplash plugin, and from here I can either search for very specific ones, and in that case it'll just apply it to everything I have selected, but since I don't want to do that, I want to have random photos. Um, I can simply click on portrait, and just like that, it's assigned a random uh, photo to each of those avatars, and then I get to just move on with my design. I don't have to worry about it right now. And uh, yeah, the Unsplash plugin is a lifesaver. <laughs> um, and then finally, the last thing I wanted to go over was the Lorem Ipsum plugin. And um, I'd say for over a decade now, I've been going to lipsum.com, where you can choose uh, how many uh, characters, paragraphs, or words generated in Lorem Ipsum that you need. And it, while that's useful, sometimes I just want to simply select an object and then run a plugin and then just have it apply the text right there in place. And fortunately, the Lorem Ipsum plugin is that. And what's actually really neat about it is uh, based on the size of the component you have selected, the text box, you can actually have it pre-fill up to the limit of that component.
So you don't have to worry about, you know, copy and pasting, you know, 500 words in here and then having to like remove all the excess stuff. In this one, you simply just define the size of the text box, uh, run the plugin, and then it fills up up to that max. Uh, so in this case, um, let's see, let me go ahead and resize this text box to something like here. I'm going to hit auto generate and that's it. That is how simple it is. Um, and yeah, so those are the five plugins, uh, the five Figma plugins that uh, I think should hopefully help speed up your workflow. Um, pretty much at any stage of your project, I think all of these are super useful um, when it comes to uh, iterating, creating variants, creating storylines, all this stuff should really help kind of speed up the process to make sure you're not getting bogged down in the actual tedium of, you know, creating the uh, realistic details on a project to make sure, you know, it feels true to life. And um, yeah, so if you like this video, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I'll make sure to include a link to this uh, in the Figma community in the description below. So please check that out. Uh, check out how the components laid out. If you want to play with it, you can make a duplicate and, and go from there. Uh, anyway, my name is RJ Nye. I'm with Rocksaw Studios and see you next time.